To put an image on a web page, we use the image element. It's written as IMG. And then there are four attributes we want to include on every image element. The source attribute, shortened to SRC, the alt attribute, ALT, and the width and height attributes. Every image should have all four. The source attribute is what tells the browser which image file to load. So let me paste the URL to our image into the source. And you can see the image is loading. This URL happens to be an absolute URL to the CDN where CodePen is storing its images for these demos. It might seem that we're done and that's all we need, but we're not done yet. We also need an alt attribute. This acts as a substitute for the image whenever the image can't be seen. People who are blind, for example, may use a screen reader that reads the alt text aloud to them. This is what they experience of this image. So let's make it interesting. Shiny black dog looking pensive. We don't need to say a photo of a, that's overly wordy. It's understood that this is an image or a photo. We don't want to use dozens of words to write everything about this photo. We want to write about what's most important. Why are we putting this image on the site? What matters about it? All text can be funny or poetic. It doesn't have to be dry. If there's nothing for people to know about the image, then we can leave the alt text blank. Here's an example of when that might be the case. In this header, the name of the company is wrapped in an H1, and the company logo is an image. So what could the alt text be? Maybe we could say happy dog. It is a drawing of a happy dog, but the name of the company is happy dog daycare. Hearing happy dog, happy dog daycare isn't really a better experience. We'll include the alt attribute so it's clear we've thought about the alt text, and then we'll leave it blank. It'll be skipped over and nothing will be spoken aloud. If we leave off the alt attribute instead, there's a chance that the file name for the image will get read aloud. So let's not do that. Next, we need to let the browser know how big the image is in pixels. This image is 400 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall. If we open it in something like Photoshop, we can see that that's actually how big the photo is. So I'll add that information to the image element and the width and height attributes. Now, we don't include a unit on these numbers. We just put the number. It's understood to mean pixels, actual pixels. It doesn't matter which comes first, the height or the width. In fact, the order of attributes in an HTML element never matters. We can put them in whatever order we want. So why are we doing this? The image has already loaded and it looks just fine. It doesn't seem to like typing the width and height did anything. Well, once the file is already loaded and on the page, the width and height attributes don't do anything. The browser figured out how big to display the image by downloading it, looking at the file and its characteristics, and using that to calculate the layout. The problem is that if the browser has to get the size information out of the file, then it can't calculate this part of the layout until after the image has downloaded. If instead we tell the browser how big each image is, then it knows immediately, and that gives the browser a split second head start in calculating the layout. Have you ever started reading an article on the web and it keeps jumping around as images load, moving everything as you're trying to read? Well, including the width and height attributes on your images will fix that. Sometimes we want to display a big, beautiful, high resolution image for people with big screens and then shrink it way down for people on phones on small screens. CSS can do this. One image file can be shown at any size, but there's a problem. A big high resolution image contains millions of pixels and all that data can make the file size pretty big which takes a lot of time to download on a slow network connection and can use up people's data plans and in some markets cost them a lot of money. We don't want to deliver unneeded high resolution data to small screens. Instead, maybe we should just make all of our images much, much smaller, physically smaller, less colored data, fewer pixels, more compressed. That will work well for a smaller screen. But then if we send that file to everybody, People with big desktop monitors won't get to see a large, glorious photo. They'll get a low quality photo blown up really big, 
or our web designs are limited to keeping every image physically really small. So what can we do? Well, we can use the power of HTML to deliver different image files to different size screens. We can make several different files and list them as a set of options in our HTML and let the browser decide which image to download. It can do so in coordination with the operating system while taking the device hardware capabilities and the network speed into account as well. Let's first start with the basic code for loading an image on the page. I have an image element with a source attribute that points to an image file with the alt text and the width and the height, just like we talked about when I first introduced the image element. You can see here that I wrote 480 in the big white text on the image itself, so it's obvious which image has loaded when. Now, this image is 480 pixels wide, and it will look good when it's displayed at 480 pixels or smaller on some devices. More and more screens these days, however, are not 1x screens. They're retina screens, high density, DPI, super retina, ultra fancy billions of whatever the latest name is for these amazing screens. Basically, there are a bunch of screens out there where the pixel density is 2x, 3x, 4x, where more data can be displayed by the screen. Right now, my older computer has a 1x screen. My newer computer has a 2x screen. I think my phone has a 3x screen, and I'm not really sure what the rest of my devices are. I just know that I want photos to look good. The simplest way to support these different screens is to create multiple copies of our image in different resolutions and then tell the browser that those copies are available. The device can then decide what it wants to do. The browser will look at the screen density, the network connection, the user's settings, and decide which image to use. Even if someone has a high resolution screen, the browser might decide to download a lower resolution image. I've created four copies of this photo at 480, 960, 1440, and 1920 pixels wide. Let me duplicate this basic HTML for displaying an image so we can change the second one and compare the results. We're going to still write the code for displaying the image in a normal way. This is good for older browsers. We need the source attribute, and we'll put our 1x version of the image here. We need the alt text just like before and the width and the height. It will definitely still improve in performance. Keep that. It's OK that the pixel numbers won't always be accurate. The aspect ratio is what's important here, and 480 by 360 calculates to a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. All of these photos are 4 by 3. Now, let's add a source set attribute. Inside of it, we'll list the images that we are offering the browser as choices. It's a comma-separated list with a URL to a file, a space, the resolution, like 2x, 3x, 4x, 1.5x, whatever, a comma, and the next one. Now, the browser will swap out one version of this image for another based on what it thinks is best. 